A Money Protection Guide Protect Your Money Introduction I start off talking about what's really going on with money namely two unjust things. How banks create it out of thin air every time they make a loan through a process they call fractional reserve banking which should be illegal in a capitalist world, they're the only corporation that gets to create free money for itself which is not fair in a supposed free market economy. Every federal government in the world is a sovereign nation meaning they should be able to create whatever money they need out of thin air but the world monetary system controlled by private bankers has created a situation where federal governments borrow money from either a private central bank or private commercial banks who all create this money out of nothing but expect the federal governments to pay it back at compound interest. That's why everybody who pays income tax is a sucker wage slave living in this world matrix. The first thing I was taught in economics class was the multiplier effect, the idea that putting money into people's hands causes a multiplier effect of four and a half times because they spend the money, the person they give the money to spends it and the multiplier effect goes on down the line so following this line of reasoning, having an income tax is bad for any economy because it takes money away from people which is the exact opposite of stimulating the economy. The vast majority of people pay income tax without ever questioning it. This is not about how to invest money although I cover investing. There are probably 100,000 or more investment expert know-it-alls online. My real purpose is to offer ideas on how to keep your money once you have it so the government, civil courts or burglars don't take it from you. This is also a creative guide on how to do business off the books otherwise called the underground economy or doing business under the table so that you deal mostly in cash, don't report the money as income on any official ledger and ultimately keep all the money you earn without paying a part of it out in taxes or lawsuit claims. I'm not telling you to be a loud mouth tax protester. People have done that and ended up in jail. We live in dictatorships when it comes to threatening to disrupt the government or the banking system in any way at all. Money is the absolute bottom line of freedom. Libertarians and others think it's wrong for the government to take it from us in the form of taxes. They say it's legal theft. The government supposedly takes it from the people who earn it to redistribute it for the common good while stealing a big bunch for itself. I gave up a long time wondering why people were such pacified wage slaves who didn't bother to question how the system works and why they have to pay taxes to a sovereign nation that has the ability to create its own money, not borrow it. Anyway, all this money conspiracy aside, the government, people in the legal profession and criminals have the ability to take almost anyone's money if they want to. It's not a fair system. This is about ideas to hide your money. Keep a hold of your money in a world of massive evil and exploitation. The government wants money at every turn for taxes yet the truth is that the monetary system is a criminal enterprise. It's all a massive crime against the people and most of them are brainwashed enough to fall for it and live in this stupid matrix that sucks 40% of your earnings right off the top in income tax not to mention more in sales tax, gasoline tax, etc. Private bankers create money out of nothing through a process called fractional reserve banking then lend it to the government and expect the government to pay it back with compound interest. Because of this, we're all stuck in this wage slave system where 40% or so of the money we earn goes for income tax when in truth the government of a sovereign nation has the power to create its own money without borrowing it from anybody therefore there is no need for income tax. I don't have time to discuss it all here but it's a fraud geared to enrich a few elitists. It goes against the most basic rule of economics which is the multiplier effect, to get money out into the economy because spending it creates jobs and prosperity but instead they take our money in taxes. The way I do it personally is not the way for most people because most of you are stuck in the system. I decided to live as the bohemian I am a long time ago. I haven't filed income tax returns in a long time. I own no hard assets anyone can take away like a house or a business. I have money in a local bank account, a foreign account and PayPal. I have cash. I live frugally. I don't sweat over money or obsess over it. I have medical coverage because I'm a Canadian citizen. There are countries you can live in without paying taxes but most of you want to stay where you are. A big part is to get over materialism. Life is simply time. It's not what you own like that stupid dream house they got you dreaming about. 
it's just wood, brick, and mortar. You might be part of the system and have responsibilities. You can still get out of the system and keep most of the money you earn. My sympathies lie with anyone who works hard for their money. Banks create money out of nothing every time they create a loan. I believe you are entitled to your own money without somebody taking it from you. Asset protection is not letting anyone you don't want take your money away from you including the government. You could be sued, your house or work building could burn down. You could get a divorce and your spouse wants half of all your assets. Lawyers make money filing civil lawsuits. If you've got money, you're a target. Under our legal system, anybody can sue anybody else. Regardless of whether it's justifiable or not on face, you have to go through the trial and let the judge or jury decide. This wastes time and money even if it is a frivolous lawsuit which is why many people settle up front. Some people, encouraged by unscrupulous lawyers, file lawsuits even though they know they're frivolous. They're banking on a quick out-of-court settlement or fantasizing that maybe this is the big one that will make them rich. Expect the possibility of being sued if you have lots of money and slash or run a business. It doesn't matter whether it's justified or not, expect it. It's part of the game of life in America. If you have insurance, your insurance company will manage the case. If you don't, you will have to hire a lawyer and fight it. This is why I state elsewhere, the more of your money you hide by giving it to relatives, burying it, depositing it in banks with alternative identification or take it out of the country, the less anybody including the government can take it from you. Prepare now for a day when either the government tax people or some lawyer with a lawsuit comes after you. If you don't, you could lose everything. There are several ways to hide your money. The easiest way is to put cash in plastic containers and bury them in your garage or some other safe place if you own property. If the IRS ever does a search warrant on your place, they're onto all the regular tricks about hiding cash but houses are big. You can hide money behind walls in closets, in a component like an old desktop PC, in an old car in your garage, etc. People take money to foreign countries which is not hard to do provided you take under $10,000 if you are leaving your home country because if you try to leave with over $10,000 cash without reporting it, if they catch you, they'll fine you and could seize some of it. It's easy to open a bank account in Mexico or in most countries. American citizens get on cruise ships all the time from Florida to the Caribbean or California to Mexico. There is not as much security or scrutiny here as there is at airports. If you want to hide some money, take a three-day cruise to a safe Caribbean island, bring cash, and open or bank account. It used to be easy for Canadians and Americans to open bank accounts in each other's countries. I know a guy who became an Amazon seller from Canada and used that as proof he was doing business in the United States and was able to open a bank account easily. There are loads of people all over the internet talking about free business enterprise. You can start at Dollar Vigilante at YouTube or DollarVigilante.com. FutureMoneyTrends.com Go to YouTube. Type in Fractional Reserve Banking Scam Fraud Paul Hellier Money Masters Edward G. Griffin The Creature from Jekyll Island Bill Still Money Masters BillStill.com the Still Report YouTube, youtube.com slash user slash bstill3. Twitter.com slash billstill. Facebook.com slash billstill official. I found a free ebook by David Ick called The Biggest Secret. Another one is James McIntyre's free ebook at 21stcenturyacademy.com. The title is something like What They Didn't Teach Me in School. TheMoneyMasters.com. WorldSolutionsInstitute.com Chapter 1 Protecting Your Money The Real Deal Give to Caesar what's his Jesus said but for me taxation is morally wrong when we see what they do with the money, how they waste it hand over foot and then go out looking for more victims to rob under the guise of just do. If you don't want to pay taxes and you got half a brain, you don't have to. Note that if you get caught, it's big fines and jail time. The penalties about lying about your financial assets are steep, a felony that can send you to jail for several years. 
Don't trust lawyers, accountants, or anyone else. They will rat you out to save their butts. Be careful. The easiest way is simply to set up an account in Canada if you are an American or in the United States if you are a Canadian. You can do it by mail order or in person. It's pretty easy to open an account at a stable bank in Mexico if you live near there. Drive across, rent a post office box, use a mail forwarding service or a friend's place or otherwise get an address in that country, the law specifies you must have an address in the country where your account is, and discreetly move money out of your country so your government won't know it exists and can't touch it. Don't leave a paper trail. Withdraw cash from your accounts then convert them into money orders or traveler's checks or simply use a credit card and make cash debits from it to your account. The IRS rarely checks credit cards because they think they're all debits not where money is hidden. Very little exists on the library shelves nor anywhere else in the conventional literature about tax havens. Check out number 336.24 and number 343.05 to see what's there. If the IRS wants to get you, they can do it if you play it the straight dumb way. Some people try to open accounts in another state to hide money or they might put some money away with a brokerage firm but if they use their own name and especially the social security number, the IRS can easily find it with a computer check based on the forms these financial institutions are required to fill out for tax purposes. All these financial organizations are legally bound to report all accounts via the SSN to the IRS to process the form that says you pay taxes on your interest gains. You could casually change a letter or two in your name and a number or two in your social security number but they have got systems to search for partials and variations of names plus they can easily weed out fake SSNs. By law, banks are supposed to report any account holder who makes regular large transactions over $9,999 without any apparent business ties especially if they're across borders. A good option is simply to pick another country and go live there or just transfer some of your assets there there while retaining your American citizenship. You collect social security, you make out a Mickey Mouse tax return filling in whatever you like but you will never pay taxes again, not now, not when you die. Several countries are easy to live in or go visit and put some money away like Mexico, Canada, Philippines, Caribbean Islands, Belize, Costa Rica, Panama, etc. You could always get a plastic bucket with a lid or plastic plumbing tubes, hide money in them and bury them. A way to hide money is to buy certificates for precious metals that are stored in Switzerland from reputable retail metals brokers. Asset Protection Private Lifestyle this book is about protecting the money you earn and how to live as privately as possible in the modern world where a large part of our identities are constantly electronically recorded online. Some people believe that every phone call in the world is audio recorded. They have the technology. They don't just record who you call and who calls you but the actual phone call is stored somewhere in case they need it. How do you disappear or live privately under the radar of government agencies? snoops and others who might want to get you for a lawsuit or money they claim you owe them. Smart people with money protected because there could be lawsuits filed on them at any time or some government agency could freeze their accounts or seize them for real or imagined charges. Some people want to disappear for whatever reason and start a new life. Some people are in debt. They want to escape it. Some people have a past they want to escape like divorces, alimony, criminal records, a bad reputation, enemies, etc. This book is about ideas to help with these situations. This information changes. At one time it was easy to open a foreign bank account. I don't know how much harder it is now with all this homeland security propaganda everywhere. There is no limit on the total amount of monetary instruments which may be brought into or taken out of the United States, nor is it illegal to do so. However, if you transport or cause to be transported, including by mail or other means, more than $9,999 in monetary instruments on any occasion into or out of the United States, or if you receive more than that amount, you must file a report, Customs Form 4790, with U.S. Customs, Currency and Foreign Transactions Reporting Act, 31 U.S.C. 1101. ETSEQ. 
failure to comply can result in civil criminal, and slash or forfeiture penalties. Monetary instruments include U.S. or foreign coin in current circulation, currency, travelers' checks in any form, money orders, and negotiable instruments or investment securities in bearer form. No capital gains taxes slash cross-border account. Legally, you can't have more than $9,999 in a foreign account so the info I'm about to give you is illegal even though many people do it to avoid the tax man.